So, you want to learn how to mix nodes in Blender Cycles Render. Hey guys, welcome back to Touch by Kai, I'm Kai, and today we are back in Blender once again, taking a look at how to mix different nodes in uh, in Blender, like I mentioned. So, I have this uh, sphere here with a couple with a really uh, with a couple planes lighting its uh, surface, which I will be doing a video on shortly. How to light. Uh, objects with planes so keep keep an eye out for that but uh, for today we're gonna be looking at how to uh, how to pretty much mix a couple of different things onto this sphere that you see right here so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a couple of nodes here and the first one I'm gonna add in is an add shader mix node and this is the bad boy that's actually gonna let us mix everything um, uh, together so if you hadn't noticed if you take a look at the sphere with just the diffuse going into the surface, so just the regular base color of white. You can see it's pretty bright, it's pretty nice looking, you know, it has a, a white color. If I go ahead and, I, and if I make it blue, then it has a blue color. Um, and if I mix the, sh if, I put, if I put the shader in between the diffuse and the material output, you can see it gets darker very slightly. Reason for this is because now we have two different outputs here. We have the shader, the first shader, and the second shader. Let me change this back to, uh, back to white for the time being. Um, so there we go. We have two different outputs here. We have the first shader output and the uh, the second shader output or input rather. Um, and we have a factor. This factor states how much of each one of these shaders you want to shine through. So 50 is directly in the half in 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 the in the middle. As you can see, it's half of whatever this top diffuse is, and whatever the top shader is, and whatever the bottom shader is is the other 5.5. Uh, percent. So if I make this zero, you can see it's a hundred percent the white diffuse. If I make it one, you can see it's a hundred percent the empty shader that is nothing there, which is why it's solid black. So if I put this on like 0.7, you can see it gets lighter, but not as light as if I were to go to zero. Um, so let's put that back in the middle, which is 0.5. Hopefully all that made sense. Now we can get into actually mixing something with the diffuse. We can go ahead and add in a, uh, a lot of different things, actually. We can add in a shader um, uh, glossy. We can add in a glossy shader to mix diffuse with glossy. So now we have a little bit of gloss on there. You can see it's, it, it is pretty glossy. If I change the roughness, you can see it, they get, they get uh, more sharp. And um, you can see how we have the diffuse mixed with the glossy. And if you can't tell, then this will definitely help you be able to see. If I plug just the glossy and take a look at the difference between the glossy and the diffuse and just the glossy. That is the glossy by itself. Because what it's doing is it's refracting the gray, the gray world all around it plus the two, plus the two lights that it's seeing. So it's re reflecting the, 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 gray, the gray world and then the two lights, which is not... Doesn't look too good. It looks kind of flat and 2D and cartoonish. But if we mix this with a diffuse, you can see just how cool this really does look. So we have the nice diffuse. We have the nice diffuse uh, uh, base. Then we just put the, that little bit of shine on there, which looks really amazing, uh, in my opinion. And we can take this a step further. So now you, you know how to mix different materials. We can take this a step further by actually mixing a mix. So if I go ahead and select our mix shader, hit Control D. Uh, sorry, Shift D, not Control D, and then uh, I have I have a, a duplicate of our mix shader. I can plop that down right uh, in between the mix shader and the material output. So now we have the diffuse and glossy being mixed together. Now we have this mix. So this this new this mix shader right here might as well just be called diffuse and glossy. If I could rename it, I would. I think I can rename it uh, somewhere, but I'm not going to go through all that. Uh, this is pretty much our diffuse and glossy now. Like ignore these two. They are no longer existent. Now they have become this together. Now we're going to put both of those into this. And this, maybe we want to add in a little bit of, um, uh, let's see. Uh, well, we'll do something like a mission. Yeah, we'll do a mission. And you can see now we have light being emitted from our, uh, our, from our plane. You can't tell because we have the other planes there, but still. Uh, we have light being emitted from our sphere. We also have the diffuse and the glossy texture shining through. Let's do a different one than, than emission. Let's do... Uh, you might be able to see subsurface scattering. Yeah, you can see it. Uh, so if I go ahead and change the color of this to like a yellowish, something like that, you can see how we do have that light being 
Uh, subsurface scattering is, you know, when light is too close to an object, it lets it shine through it partially, kind of like skin. If you put your skin up to, if you put your hand up to the sun, you can see through the little webbing in between your fingers and things like that. So the thinner spaces. And you can see how we're getting that effect here on the edges here where the light is shining through it. Um, so that is really pretty cool. You can do the same exact thing. So let me dis dis disconnect all of these and I hit B. Uh, to select all of them, hit G to move them over there. If we can do the same exact thing, but um, with uh, with textures themselves. So we can go ahead and let me just add in uh, diffuse again. Let me where's the diffuse? Yeah, uh, we just plug that in to uh, to there. If I go ahead and maybe I want a bit of texture on this bad boy, so I go ahead and I add in a texture uh, noise. We'll add in a noise texture since it's very simple. If I plug this into the displacement output you can see just how cool we have already we have this really nice texture that allows us to get a little bit more detail instead of just the plain sphere if you're making something like a planet or something this would definitely be the way to go you can play around with the scale and stuff i'll, I'll change the scale to about 20 the detail to uh 0. 0.4 uh no not 0. 0.4 we'll do 1.4 yeah sure we'll go crazy and the distortion to 0. 0.2 Maybe I'll turn the scale down a little bit. We'll go 15. Yeah, that looks better. All right, so now we have this really cool kind of detail uh, in our sphere now that, that definitely gives us a layer of interest. So now what we want to do is with we want to add a little bit more detail. We don't just want the noise detection. We maybe we want a little bit more, a little bit more than that. So we're going to go ahead and add in a mix shader once again. That's once again shader, mix shader. We're going to plop that right there. Um, and now you can see instantly this has gone away. It's completely gone now and the reason is because like once I said once again uh, Mix shaders don't work so well with displacement and I'll, I'll tell you why in a second here Let me go ahead and add in another texture node and this one will be uh, What do I do Veronoi? Yeah, let's do Veronoi and we'll hook that up into the second shader there and we'll put this back on 50 You can see we're not seeing anything in this mix for the displacement because this doesn't use the same type of the same type of system. You can see over here all of these nodes are green, which which indicates that they're all shader nodes. And this is to mix shaders. Textures don't really work that way because they're not shaders, they're textures. So we can't really do that. We can go ahead and disconnect that now. We can disconnect that now. And what we're gonna have to do for a texture is we're gonna have to go ahead and grab an uh, a math node here. And we hook up the math node and plug that into the displacement. Hook the color into the first value and the Veronoi, uh, the, the color of the noise and the, the color of the Veronoi into the bottom half. And you can see just now, now we have the two mixed together. So with just the Veronoi texture, it looks a bit like this. It kind of looks like a, a like a gyrosphere or like a, like, a, like a golf ball or something really cool like that. Um, really really cool effect. I love Veronoi. We can also change that from intensity to cells and you get like a cracked up look kind of like a planet Which is what we're gonna go for for to uh, for today because I wanted to kind of go for our planet feel I can change the scale to like 20 and make them all smaller Make it look like uh, a desert which is a, a very good example of how to use this by the way things you can use it for This would be great for like the Sahara Desert or something like that, but I'm gonna change it back down to five um, or maybe I'll go a little bit li a little bit higher 10 we'll go with 10 and now we can plug this color back into the value And then we can go ahead and plug that into the displacement and now you can see we have our noise and we have our Voronoi texture I can change it from uh, cells back to intensity if I want to really pretty cool I hope you guys did learn oh and by the way if you want to just uh, make a, 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 a feature stronger like you want this Verona to be a bit stronger you can just go ahead and add in an, uh, a noise and then duplicate your same Verona texture make sure the scales the same and then just plug it in just like that so now you have a stronger Verona all right so I've taken the time to let this render just a little bit to give you guys a little bit better of an idea so I'll see you guys in the next tutorial but until then bye bye